is a beautiful gospel jesus healing the blind men blind from birth i have three questions for you actually i can talk one two hours on today's gospel but i want to restrict it to three questions for you to understand so listen carefully the first question is this blindness of this blind man he was born blind he did not become blind afterwards was it because of his sin or the sin of his parents difficult question right when you suffer you are suffering because of your sin or because of the sin of your parents or grandparents now let us answer that question first question okay the second question is if you have heard properly jesus is using something to heal that blind man what is that spittle saliva why did he use it why did he use it couldn't he say one word and he got healed why did he use spittle saliva that's the second question the third question i want you to know this blind man who got healed his miracle was it instant or was it slow gradual all right we shall reflect on these three questions so let's take the first question little difficult one but let us try to understand now we have read today the shorter form of the gospel actually today's gospel is very long if you read the longer version when the blind man meets jesus the apostles are taking this opportunity to ask jesus who is responsible for this blindness is blind man or his parents now in the jewish school of thought there were two opinions jewish school of thought there were two opinions one school said all the sin is connected with prenatal before delivery in the womb the other school of thought said all the evil all the sufferings are connected after delivery soon after delivery so during jesus time and before this debate was going on at what time the evil influences human nature before delivery after conception or after delivery so one school of thought said it is prenatal the movement a baby is born in the womb the moment conception takes place in in biological medical terms we call it embryo okay so when the embryo is formed the evil influence is the embryo and then all suffering starts i'm talking little philosophy and little high language hope you understand no <coughs> now one school the other school of thought said if the evil is influencing the embryo the embryo can burst out of mother's womb and come out but it doesn't happen so they came up by quoting the book of genesis chapter 4 verse 7 genesis chapter 4 verse 7 it says sin is lurking at the door sin is lurking at the door so they said evil or sin influences human nature the moment delivery happens the baby comes out so called so these are two schools of thought then there was further debate about the soul what about the soul in the baby so again jewish thought was influenced by greek thought leading the greek thought was plato the so plato said souls are good body is evil the moment soul enters the body body contaminates the good soul and the soul becomes bad this is greek philosophy we have father orfin here he is a a uh, philosophy uh, degree holder but jewish thought said souls are divided into two categories good souls and bad souls and therefore in the in the old testament if you read the book of wisdom chapter 8 verse 19 he says i have many talents 
and go and good soul fell to my lot good soul fell to my lot so the jewish people divided good souls and bad souls greek people said souls are good they became bad and when they entered the body so this debate was going on that is why apostles want to know from the mouth of jesus who is responsible for this suffering now if you read exodus chapter 20 verse 5 exodus chapter 20 verse 5 exodus chapter 34 verse 7 numbers chapter 14 verse 18 all the three scripture readings tell us god is saying i will punish you to the third and fourth generation you might have heard this i will punish you to the third and the fourth generations now one thing is clear many times our suffering is because of our sin okay we can find out the cause and we can reason out i did this therefore i am suffering i am not supposed to eat sugar therefore my diabetes went up i am not supposed to have extra marital affair that is my family got divorced or couples got divorced family is suffering so we know the cause and we know the suffering okay can barely but certain suffering why we suffer we have no answer we have no answer but this is my thinking my personal thinking all of you you inherit your parents property your parents gold your parents money yes or no now you may not be aware if your parents or grandparents have cheated their brothers or sisters or others and made the property in their name through cheating through corruption if you are inheriting the property shouldn't you inherit their sins if you are inheriting the property or gold or money shouldn't you inherit the punishment for what they have done this is the way i think no we can't be happy only with property money gold but if there are, if there is sin there is a consequence if there is sin there is a consequence no man live as an island we are all connected we are all connected we are not living as an island but jesus does not give any explanation about the correlation between sin and suffering the apostles asking but he is not giving any explanation he is not giving and not taking any side this side or that side what he is saying if he is blind by birth it is an opportunity to give glory to god because this blind man will see a powerful work of god now the gospel that we have read is from john matthew mark luke john when john gives this type of examples his main aim is to give glory to god whereas in matthew mark and luke when they speak about miracles they want to focus on the compassion of god compassion glory is that clear now glory of god is seen when he is compassionate and when god is compassionate there are miracles and when there are miracles all glory to god because we human we can do nothing about it we can do nothing about it so if we are thinking too much about our suffering if you know about your sin go and make a good confession go and make a good confession if you know about your sin if you do not know why you are suffering surrender it to the hands of the lord he will take care he will find a way for you okay so that's the first question second question why did jesus use spittle why did jesus jesus use saliva now if you are suffering here anybody suffering here if you want a miracle and if you come to me and i take spittle from my mouth and put it on your tongue will you accept it will i put it on your eyes will you accept it 
because we are people of the modern world we are so conscious of hygiene we are so conscious of cleanliness but during the time of jesus it was a common custom it was nothing extraordinary it was normal to use a spittle why because spittle has got power saliva has got power yeah you want proof every morning before you start brushing your teeth you drink water without brushing your teeth all that saliva which is there in your mouth should go inside your stomach and your stomach will be cleansed automatically naturally you don't require tablets and other medicine that saliva early morning has got power to clean your stomach if you want more proof when you are cooking if your fingers get burnt put in your mouth immediate healing immediate healing you get a cut on your body maybe with a blade or pen or pin or injection if blood is oozing out remove saliva press it over there our saliva our spittle has got power during the time of jesus that's okay leave him alone don't worry about him he'll be fine during the time of jesus any important person distinguished person was requested to use his or her saliva or spittle for healing and therefore jesus he may not believe in the use of saliva but jesus believes the importance of respecting the customs you see you and me when we go to doctor we expect certain things from the doctor no if doctor sees you and prescribes some medicine and sends you back you'll say that doctor is not good he did not even check me properly he never touched the stethoscope to my chest and how he knows whether i got cold or fever he does not know he never used a, a thermometer nothing we expect doctor to use a thermometer a stethoscope and other things it is our expectation you follow what i'm saying so jesus being a powerful physician he is only respecting the customs and traditions during his time and using them to teach a lesson you know in medical terms it is called placebo effect what is placebo effect i am going for heart surgery and my heart surgery will be done in a very famous hospital by a very famous doctor all people are running to that doctor a placebo effect means because i did my surgery in that famous hospital because i did my surgery with a famous doctor i should be fine you understand what is placebo effect so patients have certain expectations from the doctor so here also people had expectations from jesus jesus respects the customs that is why jesus is using spittle okay the third question was it instant or gradual healing this blind man he received healing was it instant or gradual healing now there are two types of healings one is on the spot instant the other type of miracle or healing is slow growing 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 slowly now here the man is born blind but jesus is not concerned about his physical vision jesus is concerned about the vision of his soul spiritual eyesight now let us see let us analyze this blind man how he is coming to god slowly gradually step by step okay now you might have seen on youtube there are lots of self proclaimed pastors and brothers and healers no and what what do they do they pray they push people fall they get healed they say now lots of these churches protestant churches they don't accept if it is not in the bible have you ever read in the bible jesus pushing and healing have you ever read i have not yet come jesus pushing throwing down and healing no 
Do you know there are some fake miracles, fake testimonies? People are being paid to create a testimony on the stage. I'm healed, I had this sickness and that sickness, they are being paid. So that whoever, the great healer, whoever he is, he can make money from the people. That is story on another side. So that is, people want instant healing fast, like instant coffee. Okay, now, this man goes to the pool of Siloam, washes his face, and he can see. When he was coming back, maybe to meet Jesus, meanwhile Jesus already moved on, he meets certain people, and people are confused. People are saying, this man, he was blind, he was sitting near the road and begging, now he's walking, he can see. Is he the same guy? Some are saying he's the same guy, others are saying, no, he's not the one, he looks like him. But this blind man who is healed, he says, yes, I am he. I was blind, but now I can see. And people are asking, who healed you? How did you get this miracle? And he says, that man called Jesus, he healed me. He put his spittle and mixed with clay on my eyes and he told me to go and wash that man. That man called Jesus. For this blind man, Jesus was merely a man. Maybe with some extraordinary power. For the blind man, first perception, in the beginning, he was only a man. Have you heard about H.G. Wells? H.G. Wells is a is an author, writer, who has written about 70, 80 books, quite popular in the past. He is a non-Christian. And he was asked to choose a man of history, the man who changed the world completely. And being a non-Christian, he chose Jesus Christ. For A.G. Wells, Jesus Christ was just a man who changed the history of the world. Now, these people take the blind men to the Pharisees. And the Pharisees are asking, tell us, how did you get your sight? Who healed you? And the blind man is telling the Pharisees, a man called Jesus, he put a spittle in the mud, mud, applied it to my eyes, he told me to go and wash, and now I can see. The Pharisees are saying, okay, tell us about Jesus, who is Jesus? Now, the blind man is not saying he's just a man. The blind man is saying he's a prophet. You see, he's gradually going to the next level. From being a man, now a prophet. You remember last, last Friday's story? The woman at the well, Samaritan woman. At the well, she realized that Jesus is a prophet because Jesus told everything about her, about her past. He knows about the past. So Jesus being prophet knows every little secret of a heart. But the Pharisees don't want to accept that. They cannot accept any good from Jesus. So they are criticizing the blind man. You are a fake guy. And that so-called Jesus also is a fake man. Both of you have colluded together. Both of you have planned together to make this miracle. That's what that's what the Pharisees said. And they quoted, you know, Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 to 5. Deuteronomy 13, this chapter speaks about fake prophets and fake miracles. See, your jealousy can really blind you. You can never see good in others. And so what they did, because that blind man was praising Jesus, they threw him out of the temple. There's one word called excommunication. It was there even in the Catholic Church for the first thousand years. Excommunication means he cannot be part, he cannot enter the synagogue, he cannot enter the temple, he's thrown out. It's like I telling you somebody, you're excommunicated, you no longer can come inside the church. It's like that. So he's out now, and when Jesus hears that this man is thrown out of the temple, Jesus goes to meet him. John Chrysostom, bishop of the 4th century, he said, 
when the jews threw this blind men out of the temple when the jews threw this blind men out of the temple the lord of the temple came to meet him the lord of the temple came to meet him and so the blind men and jesus they are meeting each other and jesus is asking him do you know who healed you do you know who healed you and the blind man saying so i did not know tell me so that i believe and jesus said i am the one who is speaking to you and when he said that the blind man knelt down and adored jesus calling him lord first time he called him man second time he called him prophet third time he called him lord you see the gradual development or maturity in faith that's exactly what should happen to you and to me when we were children when we were babies when we received baptism we did not understand anything it is because of the faith of your parents and your godfather and godmother you were given baptism when you are growing you must grow in that faith in that christian maturity otherwise even if you are 50 years and 100 years if you don't have that christian maturity maturity in faith you are still a baby in religion you are still a baby in faith and finally who was really blind was it the blind men who received healing or the pharisees the pharisees having eyes they could not see the truth the truth is jesus christ if they cannot find any good in jesus if they cannot if they are not able to love jesus if they have not desire to come to jesus they are blind and that's exactly what happens to many christians we cannot see the truth in jesus christ we can't see the truth in his church the bride of christ and so they don't want to come for mass they don't want to go for confession having eyes you cannot see we have the best and greatest book in the world the bible if you can't find truth in that book you are blind having eyes you cannot see therefore it is so important to pray lord open my eyes that i may see lord open my eyes that i see if you read philippians chapter 2 verses 3 to 11 it says every knee shall bow and say that jesus christ is lord like the blind man he knelt down he bowed and said you are lord during this mass let's pray for that grace if our eyes are closed with prejudice if our eyes are closed with biases if our eyes are closed with racism if our if our eyes are closed with nationalism if our eyes are closed with ghetto mentality only my group my people my group my people we are blind as christians christ is the foundation of everyone whether you are from this country that country this culture that culture no we are one in jesus christ and when we can recognize everybody from different cultures and nations and places and food habits and dressing habits when we can recognize everybody as brother and sister we are open our eyes are open let's pray for that grace that the good lord may open our eyes so that we can see everyone as brothers and sisters amen in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit